My child isn't growing tall. What if she hits puberty? She'll never grow tall again. I've always been short, and I don't want my child to stay short. What injections are these? Growth hormone for growth injections to delay puberty. And here I have some answers for you. Children who are growth hormone deficient obviously qualify for growth hormone replacement. For parenting tips, celebrity interviews, recipes, conversations with experts, DIYs, and lots more. Subscribe to Kids Stop Press now. We've seen a lot of parents talk about the growth hormone injection, but we wanted to hear it from the experts. So in this series that Kids Stop Press will actually share, you will hear it from a pediatrician, a homeopath, and a pediatric endocrinologist. But to start off with, what is growth? hormone injection. Let's try and understand. In simple words, the HGH, as it popularly is known, influences height and builds bone and muscles, essential for normal growth. What parents essentially see is within three to six months, about one or two inches of growth in their child's height. What is essentially doing is it is giving you that accelerated growth before a certain age. Now, I am sure that you must be thinking, has this been done before? Is it safe? How will it impact my child's hormone and growth development? I'm sure these are questions that you may have and these are very, very valid questions. Hi guys, so Kids Stop Pressed raised the question, what injections are these? Growth hormone for growth, injections to delay puberty and here I have some answers for you. As your child approaches puberty and if the child is on the shorter side, there are ways now that we can exaggerate the growth potential by giving growth hormone injections along with delaying puberty. Because once the puberty starts setting in, the fusion of the bone plates start and the potential to grow is drastically less. Yes, this may delay the periods as well. And yes, you are going against nature, but only if the child is pathological short stature or it is severely playing on the child's mindset, you can opt for these treatments, but only in consultation with your pediatrician and the right recommended pediatric endocrinologist. Growth hormone is provided to short children with, across varied etiologies, uh, which include growth hormone deficiency and a host of genetic epigenetic conditions, including genetic syndromes. In addition to optimizing or improvising height in short children across etiology, growth hormone also improves metabolic milieu and body composition in children with growth hormone deficiency and certain genetic conditions including genetic syndromes. Growth hormone or somatropin is also used as an adjuvant to optimize height in chronic systemic diseases, commonly chronic kidney disease both before and after renal transplant as well, preferably though before renal transplant. Children who are growth hormone deficient obviously qualify for growth hormone replacement. These children cardinally present with poor growth velocities and typical physical features in the absence of a chronic systemic disease. The diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency is confirmed by provocative growth hormone testing or growth hormone stimulation test which must be performed under the supervision of an able pediatric endocrinologist. In addition to the indication of growth hormone deficiency, Growth hormone also benefits children who are shorter than the third centile for the population or those who are two standard deviations below the midparental height centile and are postulated to be short adults. Growth hormone also alters the body composition favorably, the metabolic milieu of children with certain genetic syndromes, epigenetic and genetic conditions. Children who are born small for gestational age who fail to catch up by the fourth year of life. Growth hormone is typically administered subcutaneously daily at bedtime. These injections are relatively painless and administered either via a pre-filled pen device or in the syringe and vial form. 
The parents usually administer the injections to children and are trained in the art of injection by a trained health counsellor. For children with growth hormone deficiency, we now have the option of once weekly growth hormone injection. Parents need to note that the weekly growth hormone preparation is currently studied and approved only for children with growth hormone deficiency of the primary variety. The weekly growth hormone is currently being studied for its efficacy and safety across the non-growth hormone deficient indications and we still need robust data to emerge before it can be approved for other indications. While on growth hormone therapy, the most important parameter that needs to be monitored by the treating clinician is growth velocity. The clinician needs to ascertain whether the child is responding to growth hormone therapy or not, which is gauged by an increase in growth velocity to the tune of at least 30 to 50 percent over the pretreatment growth velocity. In addition, biochemical parameters like insulin like growth factor 1 are monitored twice a year to ensure that the factor generation is within permissible thresholds for the age, sex and stage of puberty of the child. Children with growth hormone deficiency and or children with multiple pituitary hormone deficiencies, a surveillance needs to be maintained on the sufficiency of the hypothalamopituitary hormones because unmasking of deficiencies of associated hormones is common in this group of children while on growth hormone therapy. In children who are overweight, obese or have genetic syndromes predisposing them to insulin insensitivity, monitoring the glycemic control while on therapy is important. Growth hormone is a very safe molecule provided it is used where it is indicated in the right dose and the right manner under the supervision of a trained pediatric endocrinologist. Adverse effects while on growth hormone are extremely rare and are to the tune of 1 in 1000 to 1 in 10,000 children who receive growth hormone. These adverse effects are transient, self-limiting and mild. The commonest adverse effect encountered is headaches in the first two weeks of hormone therapy which occurs to the tune of 1 in 1000 children on growth hormone and the adverse effect can be easily obviated by beginning therapy with 50% of the prescribed dose for the first couple of weeks and then increasing the dose to the prescribed limit. In children with overweight status or obesity, precipitation or aggravation of insulin insensitivity needs to be looked for while on growth hormone therapy. An extremely rare condition known as slipped capital femoral epiphysis needs to be thought of if a child on growth hormone therapy presents with a limp or hip and knee pain. This is extremely rare though and seen in children with disproportionate short stages who are on growth hormone therapy. Nearly four decades of experience with growth hormone tells us that it is an extremely safe molecule and there is no evidence to link it with increased risk of tumor formation either benign or otherwise in children without such genetic predispositions. Now those unfortunate children who have pre-existing genetic predispositions or genetic syndromes which predispose them to increase tumor formation must seek an individualized discussion with their pediatric endocrinologist to understand the implications, safety of this particular therapy in their individual case profile. Growth hormone therapy is relatively expensive. The cost of growth hormone replacement in children with growth hormone deficiency is relatively lesser than when growth hormone is used for short stature in the absence of growth hormone deficiency. Typically in India, growth hormone would cost anywhere between 150 to 300 Indian rupees per unit of therapy based on whether a generic or an innovator molecule is used. Presently, most insurance companies do not cover 
outpatient based therapies including growth hormone therapy however certain sectors uh, those in the civil side and the reimbursement sector do provide assistance for growth hormone replacement for children with growth hormone deficiency and parents need to check the individualities of this therapy with their respective pediatric endocrinologists who could guide them better with regards reimbursement or insurance coverage of this therapy for parenting tips celebrity interviews recipes conversations with experts diys and lots more subscribe to kidstop press now